uh, on the receiving end today. David mentioned there obviously BHP, some decent numbers, but the outlook may be concerning a few people and they all got whacked. James, I think there's a couple of things going on here with the iron ore miners. One was Ben Bernanke's speech last night and it looks like commodity prices really focusing in on the possibility of a weaker U.S. economy. And the other is, is the comments that came out from Premier Wen Zhou Bao yesterday about possibly more weakening in the labor market in China, suggesting that uh, possibly growth hasn't uh, bottomed out or the falling growth hasn't bottomed out in China. So a lot of nerves going through that iron ore sector. If we have a look at some of the losses, we saw stocks like uh, Mount Gibson down by 6.8%. We also saw Grange Resources down by 5.1%. And then some of the bigger players, Fortescue down by 3.5%, Rio down by 3.1%, and BHP down by uh, 2%. If we have a look at the energy space, we also saw losses there, and that was despite oil prices rising overnight. And of course, tomorrow is going to be a big day for Woodside Petroleum and Santos. They both come out with their quarterly production reports, and I guess there are some fears that we could see cost blowouts at, the pro at some of their projects. So that's one thing to look out for because we know there are cost pressures in that mining space. But if we have a look at Woodside Petroleum, and this is just a two-year chart, you can see that we're coming up to a very important technical level there at $28. So getting pretty close to that level. The interesting thing about Woodside at the moment is that it does have a dividend payment in August coming up. And at the moment, it's got a historical dividend yield of 3.4%. And a fully franked, if you include the franking credits, yield of 5%, which is pretty amazing for an oil and gas company. If we have a look at BHP, the same type of metrics there, where we are seeing a historical dividend yield now of 3.4% because of just how far the dividend dividend has uh, the share prices fallen and uh, including the franking credits you're looking at a grossed up a dividend yield of about five percent there so some pretty amazing things happening on the Australian market at the moment. In terms of dividend yields Julia I mean do you think we're seeing investors positioning ahead of dividend payouts? We do see a lot of dividends being paid uh, in August and September and no doubt that it is on the minds of investors, especially those ones seeking uh, income as well as those franking credits. And if we have a look at some of those big companies that will be paying dividends uh, next month, well we see Commonwealth Bank, we also see Telstra, uh, Westfield, Westfield Retail Trust, we see uh, Cochlear coming out as well. And all of these stocks have been well supported by the upcoming dividend payment in uh, August. We have a look at CBA's performance today. It was the best performer out of the big four banks. If we have a look at Telstra. Well, yesterday the stock reached a three and a half year high. Uh, Cochlear did extremely well today, up by about one and a half percent. And of course, those franking credits are very attractive as well. And if we have a look at the likes of CBA, Telstra, as well as West Farmers, those uh, dividends come with a tax credit as well. So you're looking at a fully franked, uh, a fully franked tax credit as well. So altogether quite attractive for some of those longer term investors and those investors looking for income and no doubt that this is going to pay, play a large part in how these stocks perform over the next month. Markets. I mean, Mike McCarthy yesterday, he was with us yesterday, was talking about a, a gramophone um, formation or something along those lines. I was a little bit lost when he started talking about different musical instruments. But I mean, are you getting any sense of, of uh, where we're heading in terms of what the technicals are showing? I guess it is quite timely that we did see a decrease on the market because if you do have a look at the relative strength index on the one year chart, we were getting up to those overbought levels. And we know that 4,175 points is an important resistance level. That's the highest that the market has been in 30 days, and we were getting quite close to that. So it does look like the market getting quite nervous around the levels that we are at at the moment. And we do seem to be bouncing around between about 4,175 points and 4,000 points. Of course, the other thing to keep an eye out on is China and that's having a big impact I think yeah. in terms of the Australian market and it's quite interesting to have a look at what's happening in terms of the Chinese market and just having a look at the Shanghai composite this is a two-year graph of the Shanghai composite and it doesn't really show a bullish picture at all in fact if anything it's the opposite not only that if we have a look at technical levels you can see that we're at a very important point at the moment the lows that we've seen in the last two years we're testing it at the moment so that's one thing that we're watching in terms of the Chinese market today we did see a loss on the Shanghai Composite, but at the moment it's reversed and it's actually up by 0.1%.